welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anita Adafi. If you are new here, what I do is I am an animation to under the culture of silence on issues that I believe are huge problems and we're not dealing with them or we're being silent about them. And um, But because that can mean a million things that we don't deal with, I have decided to pick two areas that are key to my life and these are things that I myself have experienced and that is mental health challenge issues and sexual violence. And I just want to take this time to say thank you to all my subscribers and soon to be subscribers. So um, let's get into what I have for you for today. Uh, today the conversation is going to be on mental health and the question that I have for you is how is your mental health? <laughs> and I mean, um, so much has happened in this year. All right. A while back, I did write an article on, uh, I blogged about the mental health spectrum and how we're all on this con on this mental health continuum. And I just really hope that you know where you are in your, on this uh, mental health continuum. If you don't and you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, I encourage you to check it out. Um, it's on my website, loudchallenges.org. So check it out. And going into today, so I know 2020 has been a really challenging year to say the least. Um, we are dealing with a global pandemic. We've seen lots of movements around the world and there's no telling how these things have impacted so many of us in so many different ways, directly or indirectly. And um, I mean, I can only imagine what some people are going through at this time, but the fact that you're here, you know, Kudos, you made it, yay! All right, but that being said, um, I do believe it is highly imperative that, you know, you and I finish 2020 strong with a clear mind and we get into 2021, you know, mentally alive, all right? And um, why is this important? I'm glad you asked, thank you. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you an analogy. Think about a clogged toilet for a moment. You flush. Everything comes back up, and uh, that's you, right? Yeah, you. Um, chances are you want to unplug or unclog the toilet before you take any action in there. Yeah, number two. Uh, so <laughs> when we think about our lives, you know, sometimes the way we treat our minds is like an unclogged toilet that we have just refused to unclog and let things flow naturally and we, we wonder why we're not functioning optimally right but we've just got so much in there that isn't flowing out as they should all right and when i think about that it's why i want you and i to go into 2021 with a clear mind unclogged and so to help you do that i want to share with you a couple of tips that i believe that would help you get into end this year strong mentally and get into 2021 with a clear mind. Why? Because a clear mind equals a clear vision and you, my friend, have a lot at stake. All right. You have goals, you have dreams, you have aspirations that your heart is yearning to birth and you cannot do it with a clogged mind and definitely not in a new year. Okay. So I'm going to help you unclog, flush and drop it like it's a brand new you. Yeah. Brand new. In a brand new year. All right, so tip number one, take inventory. All right, as a mom, <laughs> I get to do grocery shopping a lot and sometimes I have caught myself buying things that I do not need because I failed to take inventory before I went on, on a shopping spree. And sometimes that's what we do, you know, with our, with our minds, we spend our time, energy and money on things that we either don't need or things that you know we're, we're duplicating work for us in our lives right and we can save ourselves all that time money and energy if we can only just stop and take inventory of our lives all right and weed out unnecessary stuff okay so what i want you to do this year before it ends is to you know take some time and take inventory what are you taking inventory of your time what were the things that you spent time on I mean, for some of us with the pandemic and everything, we probably had to spend more time at work for whatever reason, especially if you're in the health um, sector. And by the way, thank you to all our doctors and nurses. God bless you. Um, you know, and for some of us, we had a little bit more time freed up. I, you know, anyway, find out what you're spending your time on. You'll be shocked at what you find are necessary things that 
you know. Number two, take inventory of your money. What were the things you were spending money on? <laughs> yeah, you know, some of us are actually bankrollers of our own destruction without realizing it. You know, we, we, we fund our own bad habits and things that at the end of the day won't help us get anywhere in life. Okay, and um, another thing you want to take inventory of is your energy. Where are you putting your energy? What are the things that you focus yourself to? What are the things that you commit your your mind to? All right. So take stock of your energy. And um, finally, take stock of people. This one is a hard and tricky one, but just, you know, to ask yourself questions about the people you spend time with, people that build you up. You want to maximize those relationships going into 2021 and people that you know they're just people that when you spend time with you end up feeling stupid drained out um used like whatever you know what i'm talking about so weed out those ones all right you need to go into 2021 with no drama all right and so and um finally take inventory of your Regratitudes. Regratitude is just what I coined for reasons for gratitude. All right. So, what are things that you want to give thanks about? Take stock of them. Take inventory. If you think you have absolutely nothing to be grateful for, are you alive? Be grateful. Are you breathing right now with no external support? Be grateful. Are you at home? You know, got a roof over your head? Be grateful. Whatever it is, all right, there is always a reason to be grateful for. And if nothing else, the fact that you made it to this day, be grateful. Okay, so take inventory of those things and you should be good. Tip number two, schedule a reflection and journaling time for yourself. And this is pretty much tied into number one. And that is the part where you write it down, right? The vision, make it plain. All right, write it down. Um, sometimes we think we're processing these things, but we tend to process them better when we write it down because it creates clarity in our minds. So I'm not going to dwell so much on this, but the other thing I'm going to add to this is, this is where the mental health continuum that I talked about earlier is important. You want to go and look at that mental health continuum and ask yourself, where did you find yourself being for the most part of the year? All right. And if you find out that you were anywhere outside the green zone for the most part of the year, then it means that you know, you need to do something and just take notes of the things that are causing you, you know, to, to deviate from that place where you're at optimal mental health and, you know, understand what those triggers are and deal with them. Okay. And help yourself stay in a mentally healthy zone. Um, overall speaking, just between number one and two, doing those two things is even very good tools to help you develop better emotional intelligence. So you're welcome on the extra tip. <laughs> and number three, spend time with loved ones. I can mean, I get it. Um, you want to spend time with people, friends and family, and COVID will let you. If you're in Canada, you probably, if you're in Saskatchewan, you know the rules. You can't spend Christmas with people in other households. Um, unless, of course, you're single and they're not more than five or they're not more than four, I guess. Well, then, anyway, you get the drift. Um, spend time with loved ones, all right? It, it just helps you distress. And if you can physically be with them, you know, we're physically distanced, but not necessarily, we don't have to be emotionally disconnected, all right? We don't have to be, you know, um, mentally disconnected from people, all right? So spend time with your loved ones in whatever way that works best, that combines public health orders with spending quality time, okay? And tip number four. Find a way to do something nice for someone. You know, living beyond yourself can actually be a proof of a purposeful life. And purposeful people tend to live longer. I'd like to believe that there's a research somewhere that packs that up. And if there isn't, but I mean, seriously, though, uh, there's just something beautiful about living beyond yourself. Um, it does not have to cost so much. And that's the beautiful thing. A phone call to someone you haven't talked to in a while or someone who lives alone, grocery for someone, a little gift, a coffee, uh, coffee for someone, a gift card, anything, all right? But just do something nice for someone. Inevitably, it actually helps you to feel better about yourself. So that's an added bonus, I think. All right. So tip number five, I'm going to ask you to learn to practice self-forgiveness and self-compassion. And um, many of us, you know, we're, we're quicker to forgive other people and you're slow to forgive ourselves. All right. You're going to sleep up, admits. You're going to sleep up. All right. I didn't get every 
um, single thing that I wanted to do right every single time, all right? But when you do slip up, you're going to have to learn to show yourself some self-compassion and some self-forgiveness, okay? Learn to practice that often. As you do your reflections, you're going to see areas that you could have done better with life and you didn't, but you're going to have to forgive yourself and show yourself some compassion. But what do you do with that information is you'll find out what your lessons learned are, and you maybe make some notes on what you could have done differently and, you know, move on from that. All right. Some of it, you're just going to have to laugh at your own stupidity. <laughs> but I mean, hey, yeah, we all slip up sometimes. OK, trust me, you're not the worst. All right. Uh, yeah. OK, forgive yourself. You are human and it's OK to be human. OK. All right. And then number six. Take some time off to unplug and replug, all right? And that is actually going to be the last tip that I'm going to give you. Take time off to unplug and replug. Some of us work so hard all day, every day. We don't take time to rest. We don't. And when I say unplug to replug, I mean like schedule a day for yourself or a couple days or a couple minutes or a day in between each day, all right? To yourself, for yourself, and by yourself, all right? Go to the spa, get a massage, buy yourself a Christmas gift to wake up on Christmas Day, open up your present and be your own Santa. Mm -hmm. Self-care is another thing that you need to practice often. All right. When you forgive yourself for things that you make mistakes on, you know, you have to also learn to practice self-care. Take care of you. You can't give what you don't have. Right. And if you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to give the best to the people that you love that are around you. And I know this because when I know that I'm just, you know, moving away from that green zone of the mental health continuum, it starts to show. I become this crazy mom, you love my kids, I want to talk to husband. You know, you just, we all know we all do these things, right? But that's mostly because all up in here and all up in here, something isn't right. And when I take the time to fix that, then I become better. Okay? Practice self-care. So, those are six tips that I have for you. And number one has a, a, a little bit of layers in them. Um, let me know which one has been helpful to you and um, which ones you'll be trying. And I recommend all. But perhaps one resonates the most with you. I'd love to hear about it. So please feel free to share with me. I would appreciate that. And in the comments. All right. So uh, if this has helped you in any way, remember to like, subscribe. And share this channel, this video with someone. Um, you just don't know how you might help them. All right. So thank you for being here and hope to see you next time. Oh, and by the way, this is likely going to be my last video for the year, but I will be uploading my Instagram live chat that I have been having over the over the couple last couple months. I'll be uploading them to my YouTube channel. So feel free to check those out. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you in 2021 with an unclogged mic. Take care. Thanks and bye.